Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's Board of Education meeting and uh, call the meeting to order at 6 05 p.m. And you can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turn this over for a roll call, please. Mrs. Giller. Excuse. Mr. Pascal. Here. Mr. Jackson. Here. Mrs. Dion. Here. Mrs. Carey. Here. Mr. Annalee. Here. Mr. Noah. Here. I'll turn this over to Ms. Peggy Yosin. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. As always, questions, uh, submissions for public comment can be emailed to boecomment at provost.org. So, some of our pictures. Um, the first picture, Abram Lansing and Harmony Hill recently raised a combined 3700 for the Kids Heart Challenge, which is an annual event where students learn about heart health and then help others by raising money for the American Heart Association. One Abram Lansing student, fourth grader Addison Brady, single-handedly raised more than $1,000. So, Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you know of this annual tradition at the middle school, um, but it's called March Stashness, and every year they celebrate the start of spring by sporting some uh, creative facial hair and costumes. So this year, those wearing um, participating wore scrubs to honor real medical professionals who have worked so tirelessly over this past year. And this is social studies teacher and teacher leader, Chris Michael in the foreground. And then finally, the last photo is from a lesson this week in Mr. Costco's earth science class. The class was doing a lesson on geologic timelines and learning about major events that have caused the extinctions of various organisms. <clears throat> so that's it for pictures. So I wanted to share with you some of the New York State Department of Health interim guidance for in-person instruction because we have been getting some questions at first. CDC put out the guidance and New York State recently adopted this guidance. So you've heard a lot of talk about three feet at the elementary schools, which are already in person every day. Um, Students, we could move to three feet um, during low, moderate, or substantial risk of transmission or even high risk. Um, we were able to accommodate all of our students who wanted to return from virtual learning with the six feet um, social distancing that we are currently using at the elementary. So that's good news. Um, in counties with high risk of transmission, which is currently Albany County, middle and high school students um, have to remain at six feet apart unless we have a cohort model. And a cohort model is like we have at the elementary where the students stay together all day long um, in the in the class. So we don't have a cohort model at our middle and high school. So we would only be able to move to three feet if we were not in um, the high risk of transmission. And in fact, if we're in substantial risk, uh, cohorting is still recommended when possible. So it's the low and moderate risk when um, the cohorting is not recommended at the secondary level. Next slide. <laughs> So six feet is always the required distance between adults and between students and adults. Um, and also six feet is still always required when eating meals or snacks or um, any other time a mask must be removed, um, including common areas um, outside of the classroom, such as gym hallways. Um, prior to making any changes to reduce physical distancing, um, so even though New York State Department of Health said this is the current guidance, we um, would have to uh, have um, 
feedback from parents, community members, teachers, staff, and also include all the becoming president of CALS um, before any changes could be made. So we're not at a point where you can make those changes at the middle and high school. And um, even at this point, if we made certain changes at the elementary, we would have to vote for that meeting. We did have a reopening uh, committee at the beginning of the year. So um, we are planning on having some discussions in the near future about this and making sure people uh, understand um, the requirements of the plan. And then it has to be um, changed online and must be sent to the local health departments. So even though there is a lot of talk about three feet, I just wanted to make sure everyone was was clear and why that's not something that can happen right at this point. So the CDC and the state are the ones that identified the community transmission risk level. It's not anything that we control. We get our guidance from them. They tell us what our level is and they know we're Right. They tell us what our level is, we're high. There's um, um, when we post this to our website, we can also post the CDC tracker online, which um, we click on to, to see what our what our levels are. Um, before we start our budget presentation, I have a few other updates. Um, we we started our discussion at um, end of the year events at the high school. Students, parents, and teachers will be meeting with Principal Carlo as part of the senior events committee. So the plan is to have an in-person graduation, an in-person senior prom, and the end of senior awards. Um, we're currently discussing having them outside. Uh, the high school has procured a tent um, for that uh, period of time, and we'll share further details uh, in the upcoming weeks. And this is how is going to be sending out a save, save the dates this week so that everyone is aware. Um, also, the elementary principals and Mr. Martin and Lee and I also had a preliminary meeting and we'll continue to meet and we'll share information. But I just wanted everyone to know we are in the discussion and we just received um, guidance on this from the Department of Health uh, just uh, recently. And then finally, we've been notified that we are able to be a hub to provide vaccinations to our students who are ages 16 through 18 at Cohoes High School in conjunction with Mary's Pharmacy. Um, we're able at this point to uh, give up to 175 Pfizer vaccinations. So um, a, a big thank you to Mr. McDonald. Uh, John McDonald, Linda, Laura, Tyler, John McDonald, and I are meeting tomorrow to, to go through the details. That's great, great, great. Um, any questions? I'm assuming if we have more than we have available, we'll do some sort of lot. Um, we will um, we'll work out the details. We have about 350 uh, in person, I mean, students' grades, both in person and virtual. Uh, grades um, ages 16 to 18. Um, we have heard that um, there's a possibility that we can get a future uh, shipment of another 175. So that would be that would be ideal. So, but yes, we'll have some. Um, so does the initial check represent a commitment on, on the second check? Yes. So at that time, um, which is why the meeting is tomorrow to come up with a date because then the second date has to be planned. Uh, at the same time, and students will receive cards for their for their next. It's great, really. That's terrific. Great, wonderful news. So now uh, I'm to Stacy Nanke with the um, budget update, and then we'll take turns. Sure. So we're just starting on a conversation with an update of the federal stimulus monies because we did receive some clarification over the April break um, when the New York State budget was finalized. Uh, so the CARES Act is actually uh, current year uh, in our spending plan for the current year, the 2020-21 uh, uh, school year. Uh, it's just under 600,000 and uh, we spent the monies on um, cleaning supplies, cleaning and sanitation supplies, um, enabling us to have the virtual learning environment, 
um, as well as technology. So that that's really the the big points there. Um, those monies were accounted for in the general fund, so in the local budget. Um, we did receive clarification that the CARESA Act and the ARP Act monies, uh, so that's the, the CARESA Act is the December 2020, um, and the ARP is um, March 2021. We do have estimated allocations, so CARESA is uh, 1.8 million. Uh, the spending plan will be for the next school year and can actually be uh, extended a year beyond that up to uh, September of 2023. And that will be accounted for in the special fund, um, like the grants. So that will not be included in the, in the general fund and through the budget process. So that's new news. Uh, the ARP Act, the estimated allocation is 5.1 million. And the spending plan is over three, possibly four school years. Um, so that'll be uh, next school year, uh, the 22, 23 school year, 23, 24, and possibly into uh, September um, 24. And again, those monies will be accounted for in the special aid fund uh, through the grant process. There will also be a requirement for each district uh, to seek, uh, to prepare a plan and to seek uh, public comment on those plans. And really, uh, each district will need to prioritize um, non reoccurring expenses that address uh, issues and um, learning loss that occurred through the COVID pandemic um, in the past year, basically. Uh, so a good portion of the funds will be uh, spent on learning loss uh, interventions, um, summer and after school enrichment programs, um, maximizing in person instruction time, education technology, um, operating and meeting student needs, uh, reducing class size, addressing social emotional. So there's a whole a myriad of, of needs that we have that we will be able to uh, plan for with these money. So uh, we'll be talking about that throughout the next several months. Are there any questions on stimulus money so far? So the New York State budget is uh, good news. It's, it's good news. I'm happy to report good news for once. <laughs> Oh, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm smiling under my mouth. Um, so New York State had a year over year increase of $1.8 billion. So that's for education and whole. And really most of that is attributed to an increase in foundation aid with a promise um, within three years to fully fund foundation aid, which would be huge. But of course that is dependent on New York State revenues so that that could change but it's good news for right now what was not included in the budget was um, the proposal to consolidate and reduce our expense aid categories so that's a new category services aid so again that's good news and what was also not included there was a 1.4 million dollar negative adjustment which was offset by, by star revenue, which is really tax levy revenue. So that wasn't included in the budget as well. Also very good news. Some other updates. Um, again, we received guidance regarding the federal stimulus monies. And um, in our prior meetings, we were accounting for that um, in the general budget because we thought it would be treated like the the CARES money, so we got uh, guidance that that's not the case, so it'll be treated by grants, so that that um, you won't see that in the revenue figures. Transportation aid, again, good news on this. You'll recall uh, 1920 aid. Uh, we weren't sure during the closure period if we were going to have any reimbursement uh, from March 16th through June 30th, so we do have good news. We're March 16th through May 7th will be eligible for aid, uh, so that's that's good news. There will also be some grant opportunities for UPK expansion, and there is a new uh, property tax credit 
and that will be income based. It won't you won't see it through uh, your uh, property tax bill. It'll be something that uh, you apply for when you uh, file your taxes, your 2022 taxes. So it's a credit that certain eligible folks will be able to apply for through that process. Uh, there's star changes for mobile homeowners, uh, which we'll go see through uh, the assessment process. And then uh, there's uh, in the prior year budget for the state, they shifted uh, maintenance of costs for residential placements for special education students to districts. So that continues through April 1 of 2022. So the revenue summary has been updated. The net revenue impact is a positive $39,000. I highlighted the four categories that were modified. So again, state aid, uh, that figure was increased uh, to reflect the foundation aid growth and the change in the expense revenue. So good news there. The federal aid, uh, the CARES, not the CARES, sorry, the CARISA and the ARP monies were reduced from that line item because that won't be accounted for in the general fund. Uh, the inner fund revenues, we had a uh, planned use of 230000 for the Avlar Reserve, so that was reduced to zero. And the overall total budget, again, increased 39214 Again, year over year, it is a decrease of a half percent. Or $230,000. On the expense side, the only item that has changed is operations. Um, and that was an increase to technology hardware. Uh, we had uh, decreased that um, through the budget process as we were planning. Um, so we allocated the $39,000 in additional monies to, to hardware. Um, so that's the only change on the expense side of the house. Is that going to get us to one to one? So we will be able to use stimulus monies. We'll be able to use smart school monies, and we'll be able to spend monies on a federal full budget. Um, depending on the availability of the product, uh, we should be one to one, three through twelve. I would say. Um, depending on the availability of the products. Yeah. And then next year, we will need to update our IT plan, our long range plan, and our smart schools plan um, to address uh, K, K through two. This puts us in a much better position to do that and start a, a placement plan. Absolutely. So absolutely. Starting from you know, down here. <laughs> absolutely. So the proposed budget uh, was slightly modified again by that 39,000. Again, year over year, it's a half percent decrease, $230,000. We'll talk about uh, the budget process, what's included, and then what, what was excluded next. So step one in the budget process um, is uh, needs assessment. Um, which basically all the stakeholders take part in um, for our elementary schools. It's our building leadership teams uh, with our principals. At the secondary level, it's our uh, teacher leaders with the, with the principals and then the directors, uh, such as special programs, uh, buildings and grounds, and information technology. So from the needs assessments process, uh, the budgets are actually submitted uh, by the, the building or the departments. And this year we uh, used a zero based budget approach, which was different than any other year. Um, in years past, we had rolled the budget forward uh, and then made adjustments as necessary. So we literally started from scratch this year. Right? It was a very time intensive process but I thought it was a valuable process. Um, we had three categories. So category one, um, items that were identified as such are really mandated or uh, required regulatory items, basically items that are necessary in order for us to have our day-to-day -day operations. Category two items were identified needs. 
And for any category two items, we did have a return on investment process um, that we had uh, each principal or director complete uh, for the budget co committee to, to analyze. So the third step in, I'm uh, sorry, the third category uh, are basically the asks uh, or the wants. Um, and during this budget process, we weren't able to include category three items, but we didn't want those items to, to uh, fall off our radar. So last step in the process really is the, is the budget committee. Uh, the budget committee uh, met with, with each um, of the stakeholder teams. Uh, we reviewed uh, each line item, um, each ROI, analyzed the ROIs, and then made uh, recommendations. Matt doesn't seem to do justice to <laughs> <laughs> a good enough word. Yeah, it seems like someone is short and sweet, but it's lots of work, right? <laughs> so we can continue on. So we went over these last time, but to reiterate, um, on the left hand side are uh, what the, the principals and departments talked about in terms of their needs assessment and they presented. In the proposed budget, there is the AIM Academy uh, at the high school, um, bringing the uh, school counselor to a 1.0. Uh, the ARC transitions, they're currently, uh, or they were at 1.5, so bringing them back at a 1.0 after school assistance program for our students who are struggling, um, and, then, and then summer school. If you can see on the left um, in the tan or light goal, full-time social worker and special education teacher um, were in the second category, but were not included in the budget. We felt that these were still important things, but through the return on investment uh, process, um, they were not included. At the middle school, same thing, needs assessment in the proposed budget, the, bringing the school counselor to the 1.0. A specialized tier three reading teacher, and this teacher is able to work with students who are both um, special education or, and also students who have academic intervention needs. So uh, across both categories, and then uh, point two in the special class math and behavior supports. And then at the elementary, uh, at Abram Lansing, uh, two special education teachers. Uh, this. Um, in our old terminology would have been budget neutral using shifting existing staff um, but through this process we go through the roi process um, nis providers at the elementary um, the music teacher in a uh, in-person uh, model we, we need to add the additional music teacher math and science curriculum resources social emotional support technology and professional curriculum development and there are there are um, there is professional and curriculum development technology in the other in the other areas as well. But we were just highlighting the needs assessment in this piece. So as the in terms of the other departments, um, hardware as we discussed, clubs to be offered at schools with some exclusions, um, ukulele, um, advanced robotics. Ninth grade international cooking, drive, and sled fire. And then all current athletic program levels offered. So, one thing at um, the um, meeting last time, uh, we uh, had been asked to show some of the things that uh, were not included in the budget from the other categories. So, in category one, there were some adjustments and efficiencies. We um, reduced technology um, and uh, found alternative funding. Um, some building repairs reduced, some instructional textbooks reduced and materials and supplies. Um, the, um, reducing the communication specialist services from four days to three days and then uh, retirements and attrition. So through retirements and attrition, um, it was 1.8 teachers, two TAs, um, 0.5 library media specialists in it. So those were those were in that area. 
Um, so category two exclusions, as we discussed, uh, goes high school full time social worker, special education teacher, a teacher assistant at the middle school, Abram Lansing and Van Spike, a full time psychologist. Uh, buildings of ground to reduce the equipment, um, the 0.5 uh, ARC transition service. Um, we're going to be funding special education teacher leaders through grants and uh, professional development, uh, we believe, can be funded through grants. It was reduced. The clubs that Stacy mentioned and then uh, uniforms in that clubs reduced to prior year levels. And again, these were all based on the ROI process. And then the category three exclusions, uh, which um, uh, did not make it into the budget, some training and conference uh, reductions for buildings and grounds, some furniture, proceeds, uh, art, and ed, and, and then field trips. Any questions on any of these before we go on? I have a couple of things. Um, the aims of how to be coming back that bring back any of the re reductions, the reduced staff. Yes. Okay. So they'll okay, go ahead. Yep, it brings back um we have reduced uh social studies by the the 1.0 math by uh 0.6 um, English. It brings it does bring all of them back to that level. Two full time. Two full time. Okay. Yes. And uh I'm kind of confused. I, I think there are like eight elementary and retirements. I'm just guessing. It's seven or eight of them that we saw. So, what's happening with those positions? Mm -hmm. Are they hiring to fill those positions, or? So, I think it's one uh, elementary teacher at Harmony and three or four at Lansing School Social Worker. Um, so we, you know, we will we will be filling those positions at Abram Lansing. Uh, it might not it will not look exactly the way it, it does now so for example um we um will be uh having some of those positions people special education teacher positions but within current staffing it's a it's really a reduction of one teacher at even weeks one so teacher Okay, so I, I just am trying to do that. So if a, let's say a first grade, third grade, and fourth grade teacher retire, those positions are being replaced by a special position? Um, we currently have teachers who are slated, elementary teachers who perhaps uh, a year ago were going to be slated for AIS, but then because of social distancing, they either went back to the classroom and did virtual. So we would have elementary certified teachers return to the classroom instead of having two AIS teachers, those would come back to special ed. So um, Lansing would have two AIS teachers and then two additional special education teachers. So the postings would be for two special education teachers, not for elementary ed teachers. Because there's existing elementary staff. So moving into the, into those positions from special ed kind of AIS um one is uh from virtual or from because if you may recall we had to move everyone around this year for social distancing and once the budget is voted on the past will those teachers be contacted right away that they once the budget is passed, we would then call any teacher back from the uh, oh, any teacher. Um, they would be they would be contacted. Um, positions that um, are not new and presented in this budget. So, for example, the social worker we can we will post prior to the budget vote. Um, any changed positions we will post after the budget vote. Thank you. So I just can I just make a comment about the process again. Um, first, another huge thank you to principals and directors because they were truthful and honest and only really asked for the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Really, really stripped it all down. 
and there's value in every single thing that they asked for. Um, the way that we built it this year, we had to have an eye to the future. That doesn't mean all of these things are never coming back, right? We just have to reset ourselves, and this was the best way that we knew to come up with that plan. So there's still value in all of these things. I don't want people to think that you know we discounted their requests because we know how bare bones their requests were. So I just want to thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, this is just a reminder slide. <clears throat> Some budget deadlines that are looming. So April 23rd is the deadline for us to adopt the budget and our property tax report card. Um, shortly after it will be submitted to the SED. And um, the budget hearing uh, the week of May 4th through May 11th. Immediately following the budget notices will be sent to the eligible voters and May 18th is the final statewide vote, um, the re-vote being June 15th. So the next time we meet is April 21st, unless we feel like we need to have a special meeting between now and then, um, at which point the board would act on the budget and approving the property tax report card. And then the actual budget meeting, uh, the budget hearing will be on May 5th. And um, following the annual budget vote, uh, the board meets to approve the results. So at this point in time, um, just a discussion, next time, just a discussion about um, uh, Changes and questions. To maybe as a point, I think since I've been on the board for uh, 10 years now, it's always been three years out, we could financially be financially insolvent. It's always been, you know, the trajectory is three years out, we could be in trouble. And so I think at this point, we've changed that trajectory um, to a more positive place. Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of difficulties and things that we've had to do to incur that cost to make that happen. But that, that roadmap is now a much more positive roadmap looking at it, which I think is, is obviously very good. Um, this is the first year in at least a decade that we're not balancing the budget planning a loss. And we're also balancing our budget, not using any reserves. Um, so this is an agreeable. Have we ever done that before? <laughs> that nice. I don't know. That since I can recall, right? So that's huge. There was a, a lot of uncertainty this year, and we had to make a lot of sacrifices this year, um, which helped us when planning this budget because um, a lot of our resources were frozen through the fall and the winter. And then um, as we received news from the state, we were able to open up those resources. Uh, so things like materials and supplies, instructional materials and supplies are earning right now. And obviously they'll have inventory on hand uh, to get those to get through most of next year as well. So that was able to help us. Um, which obviously is a great habit every year. So, you know, there's, there's positives to take away, plenty of negatives, but there's some positives to take away. I also thought that um, the budget process was greatly improved. And a much more collaborative process. Which obviously is a positive as well. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone in the process. In particular, my fellow board members, uh, Andy and Rick and Matt Braden, mm -hmm. um, who extended themselves. These are all volunteers, and mm -hmm. my, my experience, none of this is enjoyable. And, uh, right. I appreciate their time. It's a very small time to go uh, to this budget. It was, it was not like my, my time here. So, thank, thank you. Yes. Yeah. I have one question about the UPK expansion that may be grant funded. What does that mean? What kind of expansion are we talking about? 
So I did, I did call and they can't give us any information yet. Uh, <laughs> if, okay. if we were, if we qualified, it would mean that we would add children. And we might be probably we did qualify in the classroom. Yes. And because of that, it looks like we could actually use additional funds to then have that classroom back. Um, but we don't have uh, anything that's, um, Said about that, and we might have fun, but we're, we're hoping to. I just wanted that clarified. Correct me if I'm wrong, but UPK is still entirely grant funded, right? It's not brought into our regular budget process. It's still separate. UPK is entirely grant funded. Yeah. Okay. So any grants would just be on top of the grants that we have to run it currently. And and we did at one point in time we were concerned about getting our full funding for UPK, and I believe we did get our full funding yeah. you know, for UPK. Yeah. So, please. The only other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, as far as the difficulties and the choices that we've had to make, and we're writing the path looking ahead. For me, what I think that will mean is that when you know the state has a good year and we get a good allocation for education, it just won't. It won't mean that we simply get to stay afloat. We'll actually be able to use that in a, a more positive way to add some of these things back or add new things that we can't even think about today that we'll need. So that that is a exciting prospect, you know, looking ahead, hopefully. The foundation aid is fully funded, truly, in three years, that would be huge for us. With the proposed budget, uh, foundation aid is 17 million fully funded with a 21 million, so, Firstly, in the funding and foundation aid, so that would be huge for us if that really uh, does does happen in the upcoming years. Any other questions on any comments? I I don't have one on the budget. I have a comment, just a fun comment to add. <laughs> well, I like that too. Um, so today, I, I guess the middle school ended their game of fire drill, and then Mr. Mardell and kept them outside for their back game. And they had each teacher had to find another teacher that they haven't seen once all year. And I have to tell you that, if, well, if you worked for him, which I have, his creativity is unending. I mean, he just makes it fun there, but. It was amazing to me that you could go through that building for an, well up until April and not see mm -hmm. certain teachers that you that I would see all the time. Yeah. So they made it this far, and you now they remain positive over there, and fun learning is still going on. But I just wanted to kind of congratulate him for something a little creative to end the day for the faculty meeting. It's not fire always creative. <laughs> I do have a little update because we were talking at the last meeting about board meetings and um, bringing, bringing them back to um, uh, some attendees while still streaming. And then working with Aaron and Sylvie, uh, it looks like the high school cafeteria could be a place that um, uh, we use and um, the sound should work and we should spread out and we want to uh, see how it, how it went in terms of doing both. Um, decided we have to change location, but um, in, in looking at the other areas, it's it's right on the first floor. Um, attendees can um, you know, easily enter um, accessible areas. So so that is um, the, the location that we're going to be recommending for now. I know that we talked about um, the auditorium. Part of that is it's just, it, I don't think it gives you the opportunity to really look at it and talk to people because oh, it's, it's, it's a little too massive. Okay. Looking down and being on the stage. Yeah. So um, that's the area we, um, we would like to try. So then I guess the question to the board is, you know, what, what, and how many can I mean if the board included? I mean we have to include ourselves in the count. So um I'm not sure if I is think it, that would have to be measured out like is it 25% of the capacity of the cafeteria or I don't know what the number is. 
logistically speaking, what would be the cost of tables that are on the Like two. I don't know. Yeah, so so we can set up the table or we can move tables and, and look yeah. at chairs. So I think, I mean, I'll, I'll get that exact information in the uh, with Jeff Stapleton. We're still straight. Yeah. Right Continue to stream. Again. We would continue to stream, except if we if we limit capacity and it. have to end up saying you know only this many can attend, even if that many are going to attend, but if we're limiting it, and that, I think the stream is a good thing regardless. Of the yeah. Yeah. I think the oh. stream no, no, I think, think so too. I agree. Well, obviously, we can't come. They have some, somebody who's working. I mean. Thinking a lot, and a lot of people went watching. Yes, yeah. our ratings, I think, are up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Nielsen said? Yeah, we're waiting at a word of belief. Embarrassed. I just got a question from the um, agenda, and then one of the more said. Um, Lee Dunn here says about um, uh, student uh, said nine hundred and sixty eight dollars for um, services from Waterford Union Free School Districts. Um, how many students do we actually have? How many students are we going to be paying for? I'm from there, six feet. It's like twenty five. Mm -hmm. That and services to buy this. Mm -hmm. Health services to provide the schools. Oh, yeah. yeah, to provide health and welfare services to students residing in the Coast City School District and attending school within the Wallsford Union for East School Districts. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, six, school. it's six children. Okay. And it would be $5,813.46. Uh, the other one, I already know the answer to this, I just feel like it should be said out loud. Um, we were talking about the um, uh, over 16 is being uh, vaccinated. Um, the opt in, opt out is optional, correct? Mm -hmm. And the school cannot mandate that you are vaccinated because currently the coronavirus vaccination is not on one of the state mandated lists. Correct. This is optional. We'll be sending parent permission. So, right. home, there's forms. Yes. Okay. We'll be, but it'll be offered, it'll be easy. Uh, easy access, um, not having to uh, drive. And, uh, I, yeah. I think it's great. I, I already know that there's going to be some questions going, so it's just why so, get them there. Somebody's actually saying. And so after our meeting tomorrow, we'll be sending out communication to parents, and then we'll be sending permission slips. Any other, I think they're covering discussion on the agenda items or presentation items. Uh, I don't have any community discussion items related to the agenda. And so with that, I could use a motion for the next consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Second. I love it. It's perfect. Oh, both names. <laughs> That's great. Mr. Pascal? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mrs. Dion? Yes. Mrs. Carey? Yes. Mr. Annally? Yes. And Mr. Null? Yes. Aside from that, any comments from board members on any topic at all? I know one thing I had was annually the school board votes on the OC budget, which usually doesn't get a lot of discussion, but I had reached out to, to Stacey to see if there was any information she could potentially provide the board for to make a more educated opinion around it. I mean, uh, you know, at least we personally may have it. So, um, the piece that the, that the our board votes on is the administrative budget for those years. Um, it's $12.2 million. The majority of that is the retiree health costs. It's uh, 8.7 million of that 12.2. Um, 4.5 million is associated with their operating expenses. So um, the cost of doing business basically. So HR, payroll, um, their benefits, their accounting processes, and their overall leadership. So 5% uh, 
The total administrative budget for those seasons is 8%, of which 5% is the retiree cost and 3% is the administrative fees, which is uh, impressive, actually. 90% of their overall budget is, is programmed. So it's kind of it in a nutshell. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I was just hoping for something, um, you know, typically I think it, it passes by on the agenda and I wanted to give it a little bit more attention. Yeah. So again, it's just the administrative piece, uh, just like just like us when we do our, our budget hearing, uh, they have to break down the budget in three pieces. So their administrative cost really is the retiree cost. They did have an increase in their administrative budget, but they have 50 new retirees. So. So this is based on our enrollment that have they come out yeah. yeah. So we've had an increase in enrollment, which is why we're a bit higher than the others. So we've had we've had uh, our overall enrollment in the district has been relatively flat. Um, our participation in CTE. Has increased, yeah, and it's based on the five year. And unfortunately, if you say that you are going to attend in September, you're counted for it for throughout the whole year. So that's how that works. So um, we've taken a look at that onboarding process and we're making changes there to make it a little bit more robust, make sure that uh, students. Uh, Say that they're going to have time they're invested in the program. More more titles come up with a new system to um, to have more coverage over time. So, so what what happens now if we have a country that have it back up to back up to where they work from? We will. We will. Yeah. After after uh, after some action. Yeah, in a in a yeah, in a few weeks. <laughs> So what what will occur as far as who's where? Um, at that point in time, uh, Lori Ross will go back to the middle school. She's currently there for two days a week, so then she will go back to the uh, five days a week, and we will come back to the to the high school. So we'll return to three and three two. Yes. Yes. So we'll hear reports on our progress on our focus on a plan. We will, and but as I was uh, talking with Aaron today about his purchase and the, the plan to uh, we're kind of getting uh, getting that story out, but yes, we're in the plan. Just one more thing. Um, get your vaccine, get your vaccine, the Lord, but whichever God you do or don't pray to, please get your vaccination so we can stop with this. <laughs> I know people like me to wear a mask because there's less of me to see. So the more people that we get vaccinated, the faster we can get out of this and go back to some sense of normality. So I don't know anybody's think that when I was asking about the oxygen opt out earlier, that I was advocating for not getting your vaccine. I'm not. Please get your vaccination if you are eligible. Agreed, agreed. In that case, our next meeting is April 21st, and that'll be live streamed at 6 o'clock. And then, given that, I'll, I'll need a motion to enter into executive session at 6.53 to discuss matters leading to the promotion of a particular person. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pascal? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mrs. Dion? Yes. Mrs. Carey? Yes. Mr. Annerley? Yes. And Mr. Nolan? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.